Did you know that contrary to popular belief, Pluto is not the farthest planet from the Sun? Now there's a statement that might have just thrown your entire understanding of our solar system into a whirlwind. It's a common misconception that Pluto, often considered the ninth planet, always holds the title as the most distant planet in our solar system. But in reality, it's not always the case. Pluto's orbit is a little different from the rest of the planets. Instead of a relatively circular orbit like its siblings, it follows an elliptical path around the Sun. This means for a portion of its journey, Pluto swings inside the orbit of Neptune, the eighth planet. Now, you might be thinking, how often does this happen? Well, it's not a quick trip. Pluto takes about 248 Earth years to complete one full orbit around the Sun. And out of those, for roughly 20 years, Pluto is actually closer to the Sun than Neptune. This unusual orbital characteristic led to some heated debates about Pluto's status as a planet. In fact, it was one of the factors that played into the decision to reclassify Pluto as a dwarf planet by the International Astronomical Union in 2006. But don't let that make you think any less of Pluto. It may not always be the farthest planet from the Sun, and it may not even be officially classified as a planet anymore, but Pluto's unique features and behaviors continue to intrigue and challenge our understanding of the universe. So, Pluto's position isn't as fixed as you might have thought, is it? Now, isn't that a fascinating paradox to ponder upon? Have you ever wondered why Pluto was demoted from being a planet? Let's take a journey back in time to the year 2006. It was then that the International Astronomical Union, or IAU, decided to redefine what constitutes a planet. According to their new definition, a planet is a celestial body that orbits the Sun, is spherical in shape and has cleared its orbit of other debris. Pluto, as much as we all love it, simply didn't meet these criteria. While it orbits the Sun and is round like a planet, it's located in a region known as the Kuiper Belt, a distant area of the solar system filled with millions of small icy bodies. In other words, Pluto hasn't cleared its orbit of other debris, and thus, according to the IAU's definition, it can't be classified as a planet. But this decision to demote Pluto wasn't without controversy. Many scientists disagreed with the IAU's definition, arguing that it's too narrow and leaves out celestial bodies that are just as deserving of the planet title. Some even suggested alternative definitions that would include Pluto and other similar objects in our solar system. The debate about Pluto's planetary status is more than just a matter of semantics. It's a reflection of our evolving understanding of the cosmos. As we continue to explore the farthest reaches of our solar system, we're finding more and more objects that challenge our traditional notions of what a planet is. But regardless of whether we call Pluto a planet, a dwarf planet, or something else entirely, what's most important is what it can teach us about the universe. Its unique characteristics and location in the Kuiper Belt make it a valuable object of study for astronomers. In the grand scheme of the cosmos, it's not about labels, but about understanding the celestial bodies that share our solar system. What if we told you that Pluto is actually made of ice and not rock? That's right, our beloved Pluto, once known as the ninth planet of our solar system, often misunderstood, is primarily composed of a mixture of rock and ice. Let's dive a bit deeper. Picture this, a celestial body, a dwarf planet, with most of its volume made up of a rock-ice mixture. This unique composition sets Pluto apart from other celestial bodies in our solar system. This icy rocky combination contributes to Pluto's distinctive characteristics and its status as an icy dwarf. Now let's look at the numbers. About two-thirds of Pluto's mass is made up of rock, while the remaining one-third is ice. This composition, along with its distance from the Sun, gives Pluto its notoriously chilly surface temperature, averaging around minus 375 degrees Fahrenheit. That's colder than any average winter day on Earth, to say the least. But it's not just the composition that makes Pluto fascinating. 
Its surface is also home to mountains, valleys, and plains. And these are not just your average geographical features. We're talking about mountains as tall as the Rockies, but made entirely of water ice as hard as rock due to the extreme cold. Pluto's icy exterior also leads to some interesting phenomena. When Pluto moves closer to the Sun during its orbit, the ice on its surface sublimates, turning directly into gas and creating a thin atmosphere around the dwarf planet. As it moves further away from the Sun, this atmosphere freezes and falls back to the surface, a cycle of ice to gas to ice that is as unique as the icy dwarf itself. So, what have we learned? Pluto is far from being a plain, rocky body in the outer reaches of our solar system. Its unique composition, icy surface, and the dynamic nature of its atmosphere make it a fascinating subject of study. It's a reminder that in the vast expanse of our solar system, there's always something new to discover, something to pique our curiosity, and something to challenge our understanding. So Pluto, the icy dwarf, is a unique entity in our solar system. Did you know that Pluto literally wears its heart on its surface? Now, that's not a metaphor or a poetic phrase. We're talking about a large, heart-shaped region known as Tombaugh Regio, named after Clyde Tombaugh, the astronomer who discovered Pluto in the year 1930. This heart isn't a passive symbol of love, but an active geological feature that's reshaping Pluto's surface even as we speak. Unlike the hearts we're used to, this one is made of vast plains of nitrogen ice. Yes, you heard right, nitrogen ice. That's because Pluto, despite its small size, is so cold that even nitrogen, a gas we breathe every day here on Earth, freezes solid. But what's truly fascinating about Tombo Regio isn't just its composition, but its activity. This isn't a static heart of ice. It's a dynamic, ever-changing landscape. Just imagine, on a world more than 3 billion miles away from the Sun, where temperatures hover around negative 375 degrees Fahrenheit. There's a heart that's actively beating, metaphorically speaking, of course. The nitrogen ice in Tombaugh Regio isn't just sitting there, it's moving, flowing, creating a landscape that's constantly changing. It's almost like Pluto's own version of plate tectonics, except instead of rock, it's ice that's doing the moving. This makes Pluto one of the most geologically active bodies in the outer solar system, a fact that's changing our understanding of how planets and dwarf planets evolve. So the next time you look up at the night sky and think of Pluto, remember its heart. Remember Tombaugh Regio, a heart of nitrogen ice, beating in the distant reaches of our solar system, reshaping a world in ways we're just beginning to understand. Pluto's heart is more than just a charming feature. It's a testament to the dwarf planet's dynamic nature. Pluto might be small, but it's not alone out there. This petite powerhouse of the outer solar system is the ringleader of a fascinating family of moons. The most prominent of these celestial companions is Charon, which is more than just a moon to Pluto. It's a partner. Charon, named after the mythical ferryman who transported souls across the river Styx, is about half the size of Pluto. This makes it the largest moon relative to its planet in our solar system. But what's truly extraordinary about Charon isn't just its size. It's the cosmic dance it performs with Pluto. You see, most moons orbit their planets, but Pluto and Charon orbit each other. They're locked in what's called a tidal lock, meaning they always show the same face to each other, just like the moon does to Earth. But with Pluto and Charon, it's a two-way street. This gravitational tango has a profound effect on Pluto's rotation, making a day on Pluto equivalent to six and a half Earth days. But let's not forget the other members of the Pluto system. Styx, Nix, Kerberos and Hydra are four smaller moons that orbit the Pluto-Charon binary system. They're far less massive than Charon, but they add to the complexity and intrigue of the Pluto system. These tiny moons have irregular shapes and rotations, which suggests they may have had a turbulent past. Each of these moons, from Charon to Hydra, has its own unique characteristics and mysteries. They're like pieces of a cosmic jigsaw puzzle, giving us clues about the formation and evolution of the Pluto system and the outer solar system as a whole. 
So, Pluto, the misunderstood dwarf planet, is more than just a solitary figure in the depths of space. It's part of a fascinating system that's waiting to be further explored.